Good morning, Christmas greetings, and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this December 27th. I'm Rose Duncan Cannon for worship, and please know that it is truly a blessing that you have joined us this morning for the service of prayer and reflection. May Christ, the true, the only light, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from a portion of Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net they have set secretly for me, for you are my strong tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading comes from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Therefore I send you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town, so that upon you may come all righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of the righteous, Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus' words in our gospel reading seem particularly grim on the heels of our joyful celebrations of this weekend to start the Christmas season. This text is appointed for the feast of the first martyr, Stephen, typically commemorated on December 26th but transferred this year since the date fell on Sunday. In our culture, the celebration of the Nativity brings the temptation of being overly sentimental about the birth of Jesus. But the strife around us continues in spite of the manger. Indeed, the troubles of our world stand as the very reason that the Lord took on human flesh. Our gospel reading reminds us that we are sent all sorts of good teachers and messengers from God, but also relays what happens to them. In verse 34, they meet a dreadful end, being persecuted, driven from place to place, beaten and even killed. This is not something most of us would naturally think of signing up for as those who follow Christ. Jesus takes us all the way back to Abel, who was killed by his brother Cain, not because he had done something wrong, but because he had been faithful to God, and Cain couldn't stand to see that faithful witness. Throughout the Old Testament, we see the faithful persecuted. In our text, Jesus weeps over the people of Israel, knowing that they will continue to kill his messengers, actually killing Jesus himself in short order, too. They don't heed the warnings. Because of faith, Abel was beaten to death by his own brother. 
Zechariah was stoned in God's temple by those who called themselves the people of God because they did not like the content of his message. And Stephen was stoned for preaching Christ. Yet we are reminded that Jesus is constantly sending his messengers to call his people to him. He wants us to find refuge in his grace. He is constantly calling out with his good news. In commemorating the life and martyrdom of Stephen, the church reminds us today that being Christmas people requires real commitment on our part and that as much as it's joyful work, it's hard work and work that requires real faith in the promises of God. The story of Stephen actually begins in the chapter six of the book of Acts as one of the seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who were chosen by the apostles to relieve them of the administrative burden of serving tables and caring for the widows. By this appointment to assist the apostles, Stephen, the first named of those in the New Testament called the seven, became the first to do what the church traditionally considers to be the work and ministry of deacons. It is apparent that Stephen's activities involve more than simply serving tables, for the Acts of the Apostles speaks of his preaching and performing many miracles. These activities led him into conflict with some of the religious leaders who accused him of blasphemy and brought him before the Sanhedrin. His powerful sermon before the council is recorded in the seventh chapter of Acts, and I commend it to you. His denunciations of the Sanhedrin so enraged its members that without a trial, they dragged him out of the city and stoned him to death. Saul, later called Paul, stood by consenting to Stephen's death. But Stephen's example of steadfast faith in Jesus and of intercession for his persecutors was to find fruit in the mission and witness of Paul after his conversion. The Christian community in Jerusalem taking flight at the hostility of the Judean authorities was scattered so that for the first time the gospel of Christ began to spread beyond Jerusalem. No one knows exactly why this feast falls on the day after Christmas, but one thing I've come to understand is that it's easy to be excited about grace and to live as Christmas people on Christmas Eve and day, perhaps even for the 12 days of Christmas, but a bit harder to hold on to that joy and excitement, generosity and love for the rest of the year. Brothers, sisters, and siblings, Stephen reminds us that we need to be living as Christmas people, not just during Christmas tide, but every day of our lives. We give thanks to you, O Lord of glory, for the example and the first martyr, Stephen, who looked up to heaven and prayed for his persecutors to your son, Jesus Christ, who stands at your right hand where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us offer the prayers of our hearts to God. That this and all our days may be full of your praise, we pray to you, O Lord that you will keep us this day without sin, we pray to you, O Lord, that we may walk before you in the paths of righteousness and peace, we pray to you, O Lord, that you will bless your people and lift them up forever, we pray to you, O Lord, that you will guide and protect us by your Holy Spirit and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting, we pray to you, O Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.